welcome to worship. Uh, perhaps today could be described as, well, another Sunday in a lazy, hazy days of August. But even today, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So let's take a moment of silent prayer before we begin. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. Let's begin with our opening song, For the Beauty of the Earth. Let us pray. Lord, you are the one who created all things. By your will and according to your word, the heavens and the earth were formed. By your infinite power, you put the galaxies and the stars in place. By your design, you created life with all its beauty and diversity with great attention to detail, even the smallest things like living cells. By your providence, you gave us life and you set us in our families. And you have given us one blessing after another. Lord, we worship you and we bow before your greatness. We marvel at your love for us. Who are we that you should care for us and want us to belong to you? 
Thank you, Lord, for your grace in our lives. Lord, can forgive us for times when we refuse to acknowledge you and your greatness and your glory, when we glory in ourselves. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us when we have hearts that are far from you, when we have half-hearted devotion. Forgive us when we lose heart and we give up on you. Lord, renew us by your Spirit, and thank you for teaching us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, again, we're thankful for the participation of Judy, Lynn, and Matthias. And so we turn this time over for the youth message and then the anthem. Good morning and welcome to the youth message portion of our service. Today's scripture passage comes from Romans chapter 12, reading verses 9 to 21. This passage is a description of love in action. And this week I thought it would be, well, a little more fun, a little more interesting if I used some small helpers to bring this story to life and highlight love in action. Be joyful in hope, faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Be willing to associate with people of a low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil for evil. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This week, let's remember we always have a choice in how we respond to people. Let's try to be kind to one another and do our best to live peacefully. Until next week, God remembers you, God hears your prayers, and God loves you. Ich hab dein Bechlei raus, denn wohl aus dem Felsen quell. Hinab zum Tale rauschen, so frisch und wunderhell. Ich weiß nicht, wie mir wurde, ich werde den Rat wieder gab. Ich musste auch hinunter mit meinem Wanderstab. Ich musste auch hinunter mit meinem Wanderstab. Hinunter und immer weiter und immer dem Bach nach. Und immer frischer rauschte und immer heller der Bach. Und immer frischer rauschte und immer heller der Bach. Ist das denn meine Straße, wo Bechlein sprich, wohin? Wohin sprich, wohin? Du hast mit deinem Rauschen mir ganz berauscht den Sinn. Du hast mit deinem Rauschen mir ganz berauscht den Sinn. Was sag ich denn vom Rauschen? Das kann kein Rauschen sein. Es singen wohl die Nixen tief unten ihren Reim. Es singen wohl die Nixen tief unten ihren 
herein, lass singen Gesell aus Rauschen, buch und wandre fröhlich nach. Es gehen ja Mühle Räder in jedem klaren Bach. Es gehen ja Mühle Räder in jedem klaren Bach. Lass singen Gesell aus Rauschen, und wandre fröhlich nach, fröhlich nach, fröhlich nach. Our scripture reading today is taken from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. And do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, Live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them, and if they are thirsty, give them something to drink, for by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome, do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Over the summer, we've been looking at passages that speak about our common humanity. And I'd like to just briefly recap what we've covered. From Genesis chapter one, we were all created in the image and the likeness of God. So there is value and worth and sacredness and dignity in every human being. And humanity was given the task to continue God's work of creation not to destroy it or exploit it. From Genesis 11, there's power in numbers. We learn from the story of the Tower of Babel. But sometimes we can use it for the wrong goals. We can get caught up in making a name for ourselves or the fear of missing out. How can we focus on honoring God and doing things for God's glory and being part of God's kingdom? From Isaiah 55, the promise of God's kingdom is that there is room for everyone, people from every nation. And this is an open invitation. So if God created all of us, and if God uh, sent his son for the whole world, and if heaven is full of people from every uh, nation and tribe and people and language, wouldn't it be wonderful to offer hospitality and welcome and hope to all people, even for those who are different than us. From Matthew 18, uh, we also at times need to be reminded to forgive others in order to receive God's forgiveness ourselves. That was the parable of the unforgiving servant. And from Acts chapter 10, the passage we looked at last Sunday, God was at work bringing the apostle Peter to a Roman centurion, Cornelius. And Peter's discovery was that God shows no partiality, or God is no respecter of persons. 
And this means that there is no favoritism with God because every person could be our sister or brother in Christ. And today let's look at a very practical passage in Romans because it tells us how we are to relate to one another and to live at peace with one another and to overcome evil with good. It's about living out our faith in Jesus Christ so that it truly makes a difference in our relationships. But this passage also contains this interesting phrase to heap burning coals on our enemies. What is that all about? The book of Romans is this great theological treatise, the first 11 chapters particularly, written by the Apostle Paul. And the main theme is that the righteous will live by faith. And that faith is in the good news of Jesus Christ. Romans speaks of human sinfulness and God being our righteous judge and the law coming from the Jews and being made right with God or justification by faith in Jesus Christ and life in the Spirit and how salvation came from the Jews and is for Gentiles as well. So there's a lot packed into the first 11 chapters of Romans. And from chapter 12 and on, the Apostle Paul writes about how this faith makes a difference in our lives. It's to be lived out practically. It's to be applied to our relationships. Sometimes it's hard to apply any of this to our lives. Maybe because we have like a strong personality or the way that we treat other people is just deeply ingrained in us or we don't realize that we actually need to change anything in our lives. Sometimes we don't realize how we come across to other people. I know for myself that I have struggled with all of these things. Uh, when I was growing up, I played uh, ball hockey every Saturday morning at the church. It was a simple league. Basically, there were three teams, uh, red, white, and black. But the way I grew up learning to play hockey wasn't very healthy or mature or wise. I was pretty frantic once I got on the floor. I felt this pressure or this anxiety like the other team was going to take the ball away from me. So I would often pass off early or just give it away or not think about how a play might develop. I also ran around a lot and was mostly off balance, so I would often fall down. Really, it's true. It's funny because I grew up watching like Hockey Night in Canada, and I remember my dad uh, taking films out of the library, uh, like hockey training films, by this fellow named Howie Meeker. But I could never seem to put any of it into practice. As soon as I got on the floor, like I was this frantic person and not very wise about making plays. And it took me a long time uh, to get into my mind that I just can't do the same thing over and over again. I had to think carefully about just one thing I was going to change for that shift and try not to let my natural instincts take over. The reason I say this is because sometimes we have these natural instincts when it comes to our relationships. We can be, I can be, naturally curt and cold or cynical and sarcastic or loud and not listening, or afraid and easily offended. We can present these characteristics without even realizing it or thinking about it. But listen to our scripture reading again and imagine how our relationships might change if we could live out these verses in our lives. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. 
Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of others. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge for yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. For it is, uh, no, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, hold on to those uh, the questions about heaping burning coals for a moment. We'll get to that soon. But wouldn't it be amazing if we could be this kind of person that the Apostle Paul is talking about? And it doesn't even depend on what other people are doing. It doesn't depend on what other people should be doing. It doesn't say, do all of this only if you're having a good day. The first four verses speak about genuine love and how that love will work itself out in our relationship with God and our relationship with others. If we genuinely love God, we will hate what is evil and stand for what is good. We'll serve the Lord, we'll rejoice in hope, we'll be patient in suffering, we'll persevere in prayer. So genuine love for the Lord does this kind of thing. It doesn't give up easily and it isn't fickle like the weather. And if we genuinely love other people, we'll want the best for them, and we'll want to honor them even if we don't get honor ourselves. We'll help others, and we'll have this ministry of hospitality to strangers. To be honest, I've learned a lot from this church community and people here. There is a genuine love for God and a genuine love for others, and it's shown in conversations and actions and phone calls and cards and working together. There are a lot of people who genuinely love around here. Well, not here today, because the sanctuary is empty. But of course, we also have blind spots. And sometimes our natural instincts aren't always healthy and mature and wise. We don't naturally want to bless those who persecute us. And that's the next paragraph in our scripture reading, verses 14 to 18. These verses speak about living in harmony with all people. That includes those who we might think are lowly or are less esteemed in our eyes, and that includes people who we would consider to be our enemies. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Two people named John passed away recently. Both Johns brought change to society and they helped people live more peaceably. And both were committed to uh, nonviolence in their social activism. John Lewis was an American congressman, civil rights leader, and protege of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Lewis's funeral was held on July 30th at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. Throughout his life, Lewis preached a message of nonviolence. Lewis had many peaceful protests, including at the age of 25, 
crossing the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, where he suffered a fractured skull. And that day became known as Bloody Sunday. Lewis is quoted as saying, hold only love, only peace in your heart, knowing that the battle of good to overcome evil is already won. Lewis was a Baptist Christian. The other John that passed away recently was John Hume. Hume was an Irish politician and an architect of the Northern Ireland peace process and the Good Friday Agreement, and that ended 30 years of violence. Hume's funeral was held on August 5th at St. Eugene's Cathedral in Derry, Northern Ireland. During the service, Hume's son said, if dad were here today in the fullness of his health, witnessing the current tensions in the world, he wouldn't waste the opportunity to say a few words. He'd talk about our common humanity and the need to respect diversity and difference and to protect and deepen democracy and to value education and to place non-violence at the absolute center. Hume was a Catholic Christian. So both of these men stood for non-violence and peace. And wouldn't it be wonderful, if at all possible, as far as it depends on us, to live peaceably with all? The last three verses of our scripture reading speak about leaving vengeance to the Lord, leaving room for God's wrath, and how by being kind to our enemies, we heap burning coals on their heads. What does that mean? I found a couple of interpretations that fit with the context of our passage. The first suggestion is that burning coals could be an indication of God's wrath. It could be a picture of God's judgment. So as we provide food and drink in kindness to our enemy, the wrath and the judgment of God will be on them if they continue doing what they're doing. In a sense, we are killing them with kindness. And this fits our passage because it's leaving room for God's wrath. And the more kind we are to a difficult and nasty enemy, the more it speaks for the need for God to bring justice. And that's one possible interpretation. Another interpretation, instead of killing them with kindness, is restoring them with kindness. Burning coals could indicate cleansing and repentance and restoration. The phrase heaping burning coals is quoted from Proverbs chapter 25 verse 22. And some scholars believe this refers to an ancient Egyptian ritual where a guilty person would uh, show genuine repentance by walking around with a basin of burning coals on their head. Burning coals were used in the sin offering to burn incense before the Lord. And when Isaiah had a vision of God in the temple, an angel touched Isaiah's lips with a burning coal as an act of cleansing. So this also fits the context of our passage because kindness could lead an enemy to repentance and restoration. And that's a hope to overcome evil with good. The Apostle Paul became a Christian and began his missionary journeys throughout the Roman Empire and wrote his letters to the churches during the reign of three Roman emperors, all who had questionable character. Caligula was described as an insane emperor who was self-absorbed, short-tempered, killed on a whim, and indulged in too much spending and sex. He began appearing in public dressed as various gods or demigods and had people in Rome, including senators, worship him as God. Claudius was different. He was known to be disfigured and weak due to a childhood illness, perhaps polio, but he treated people well. 
other than having a short temper, and then he could get cruel and bloodthirsty. Nero is described by uh, historians as being difficult and evil and extravagant. Nero persecuted Christians and blamed them for the great fire in Rome. Nero had Christians arrested and thrown into prison, and he had them executed in many different and graphic ways. They were thrown to lions or uh, fastened to crosses or tied to stakes and then burned. Both apostles, Peter and Paul, were said to have died at the hands of Nero. Can you imagine Peter, or sorry, can you imagine the Apostle Paul writing these words during those times? Let your love be genuine. Be patient in suffering. Bless those who persecute you. Live peaceably with all. Leave room for the wrath of God. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I mean, these are amazing and valuable words that would have been hard to apply uh, by the Christians in Paul's day. And that's why we need to pray. Let us pray. Lord, help us to live prayerfully and humbly before you. For you are merciful and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Please allow your love to transform our lives so that our love for you and others may be genuine. We thank you that you are the righteous judge and we can leave room for justice and wrath and judgment in your hands. Help us to entrust that to you rather than to ourselves. Protect our hearts from anger or bitterness Heal our hearts from pains that we have received at the hands of others. Let your grace be sufficient for us that we could even bless those who persecute us and repay evil with good. Lord, help us to be peacemakers. Give us courage and strength to live by your values and your call on our lives and by your spirit. And thank you for your love for each of us and your love even for those who are difficult in our lives. Lord, we pray for us who have questions about our future, concerns about our health, uncertainty for our children going back to school, struggles with mental health and doubts about our faith. Lord, continue that good work in us that you have already begun. Fill us with your spirit so that we may live in your presence. Lord, we pray for those who serve the public good, for those who serve in government or health departments or hospitals or schools, police and first responders. We pray for wisdom and courage and humility to serve well. And thank you for the many ways that you sustain our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. few announcements. So far we've had, well, less than 10 people sign up for our golf day on Saturday, September 12th. That's fine if you don't want to see me or you don't want to play with me. But it is for a good cause for the Markham Food Bank. So if you're planning to come, please let me know. Uh, we're going to set a deadline soon. So everyone is welcome. Join us this Tuesday at 1 p.m. for our prayer meeting. Uh, it's online. You can access by Zoom or by phone. Information in the weekly email. And I want to let you know a couple of uh, other things about the church. First, we still haven't decided when we're going to uh, come back to this sanctuary for worship, for worship services. But in the meantime, our elders will be calling their districts. So. Uh, expect a call from uh, your elder, and uh, we're trying to get your feedback, so thank you in advance. Second, financially, we are doing well. Uh, we did have to apply for uh, government assistance 
for one month at the start of the pandemic. But since then, givings have picked up and uh, we're actually further ahead, uh, according to our budget, than where we were last year. Uh, our treasurer will uh, provide details in one of the upcoming weekly emails. So thank you for giving offering. It's both an offering to God and a donation to the church. Uh, let's not give out of obligation, but out of appreciation, out of worship to God, for God's blessing in our lives. Information on how to give is uh, on our website. Well, let's pray for our offering. Thank you, Lord, for every blessing that you have given to us. We bless you and we give to you through this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we close with this charge. Go now in the peace and strength of God, ready to impart to others what you have first received from God. And may the presence and power of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go with you. Amen. And we close with our final song, Freely, Freely.